Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Sometimes when I'm online, viewers will see me on Facebook or will see me on Google Plus and they'll email me asking for a pick that I've already made online. Now, um, I know some of my videos, well, at least some of them, are long-winded, and I know it's hard to keep track of the picks. So what I'm going to do here is something new. I'm going to give a quick summary of five of my recent picks. So you can just keep a scorecard as we go along with the fights. Now let me just say, and it's important, I'm making this video a day after the Miami Heat completely decimated my betting slip and not in a good way. Right last night, LeBron James became the youngest to get to 20,000 points and uh, he did so on a game in which I was on the other side of the play. Right? The point I'm making is simply that gambling is high risk. You need to understand that any of these picks can blow up. Okay? Don't think for a second that because some stranger online on YouTube is making the pick, that the pick is bulletproof. You need to use your own judgment. They're going to be great times. I know Dwyer VIP subscribers saw that I took Zhang over Stoser, but there are also going to be times where some superstar steps up, like LeBron James did last night, and literally decimates your betting slip. You need to be aware of both possibilities as you go forward. Here's what I think on some upcoming fights. I think Janady Golovkin beats Gabe Rosado. I'm privately expecting a knockout. Right? The key fight for me is Gabe Rosado against Alfredo Angulo. I believe that Golovkin fights somewhat like Angulo, only with much better defense and much better pacing. I'm expecting Janady Golovkin to beat Gabe Rosado. My highest risk swing for the fences. I can't call it a play. Let's call it a speculation of the month, which is only intended for gamblers who speculate with money they are willing to lose. This is the portion of your portfolio that has your phone ringing early in the morning. And it is Mike Dallas Jr., who I expect to get knocked out but who I'm taking over Lucas Mathis, who is now incredibly a 50 to 1 favorite in some books. When you see a minus 5,000 in American odds, that's a 50 to 1 favorite. I believe that Dallas, the other side, the underdog, who I do expect to get knocked out, but I believe that Dallas also has a chance since he has an excellent jab and since he's slick and knows how to fight long keep you outside from a side profile moving his upper body hitting you with the jab I believe he does have a chance to outwork Mathis since the odds allow you to hedge the play with the most likely outcome Mathis by KO I believe that if you want to swing for the fences, this is the place to look. Underdog, and I mean heavy underdog. Mike Dallas Jr. over Lucas Mathis with a hedge of Mathis by KO to get back your money if the most likely outcome happens. But understand the risk. If Dallas, a huge underdog, doesn't pull the upset, and if Mathis, the overwhelming favorite, doesn't get the KO, you lose it all. 
Okay, the next play. Carl Frotch versus Mikael Kessler in the rematch. And I'm rolling with Carl Frotch in the rematch. I like Frotch here. I believe the first fight was close. Closer than the judges' scorecards. Right? I try to go by what actually happened in the ring, not how it was scored on the day of the fight. I thought the first fight was close. I believe that since then, Frotch has gotten better. He's a slick fighter. He can fight you in jab mode, behind a jab, being long. Or he can fight you in mid-range hooker mode. He's excellent at angles. Look at the recent Yusef Mack fight. You'll notice that when Frotch gets going with the hooks, he's kind of off at the side. There's a little Orlando Salido in him, right? Let me also point out, too, that I'm a big believer that life is a learning experience. Even when you have rough days, you can learn things. Since the first fight, I believe Frotch has fought the better technicians, right? Frotch has fought Andre Ward and Lucien Boutte. And because I see Frotch continually improving, I think that bodes well for Frotch because I'm sure there are things he saw and learned from both of those fights that he can incorporate into his game, <clears throat> right? Now, Mikael Kessler, to me, doesn't do as much as Carl Frotch does in the ring. Let me also point out that Mikael Kessler, I thought, looked bad. In the early part of his fight against Alan Green, he actually hit the canvas. You need to consider that. I also thought that Kessler got a freebie <coughs> against Brian McGee, who didn't defend his body. <clears throat> I don't believe you can look at that Brian McGee fight and reach the conclusion that Kessler is going to be able to land body shots on Carl Frotch, who has a jab that keeps you away from him bends at the waist and is actually a complicated opponent. I would hedge the play though with Kessler by KO. Kessler does have a punch. He did stop both Alan Green and McGee. Um, Kessler's always a dangerous customer. So I like Carl Frotch in that fight hedged against Kessler by KO. Next, I like Orlando Salido over unbeaten Mikey Garcia. Why? Too much experience, too much knowledge, too many angles, too much volume. Salido, in my opinion, is a master. Right? I believe that Mikey Garcia is a bit too mechanical. Right? He needs a road map. He needs things to be stationary. He's the guy who needs to go to an unknown location in the middle of the day when the sun's up, he's not going to know what to do once the car goes off the road, in my opinion. I would hedge the play with Garcia by KO. He is a young lion with a big punch. Finally, Jean Pascal versus Chad Dawson. I'm staying on the sidelines, right? One guy has a banged up shoulder. Right, just Google Jean Pascal and shoulder 2013. I'm talking about now, and you're going to see some interesting stories. Right, Google Jean Pascal shoulder, you're going to see some interesting stories going back for a while. It's an open secret in boxing that some of these fighters <clears throat> fight with chronic injuries, they understand that they need surgery, they understand that. The injured limb is not 100% and might never get back to 100%. <clears throat> but they don't want to take the time off in their prime because they have momentum. Boxing is an event-based sport. Just going through with the next fight could net you seven figures. I believe that John Pascal has chronic shoulder problems. It doesn't matter against lower level competition. In my opinion, Chad Dawson is very high level competition. Chad Dawson, to me, remains one of the very best in the sport, pound for pound. 
right? The reason why I'm not taking Chad Dawson is that he's coming off of a devastating multi-knockdown KO loss. If there's ever a time not to take a talented fighter, it's when he's coming off of a devastating knockout loss. Understand, too, that it's uncharted waters for Dawson because Dawson's only other loss, which was to Jean Pascal, had him losing the fight on his feet. If you recall the end of that fight, Dawson was behind on the scorecards. The two guys butted heads. Dawson was bleeding. They stopped the fight. You can bounce back from that. Psychologically, it's an entirely different challenge to bounce back after you've been dropped multiple times in a fight. I've seen other guys never fully recover from being devastatingly knocked out. And here, Pascal has the kind of punching power that dropped even a great chin like Bernard Hopkins. I know Hopkins got up and continued on in the fight. The point is, don't sleep on John Pascal's power. So I don't like the fact that Chad Dawson is coming back from a knockout fight and is fighting another elite fighter so soon. I also don't like the fact that Chad Dawson is hopscotching trainers, right? You want continuity, right? One of the things that has helped the career of Vladimir Klitschko was the fact that once he hooked up with Emmanuel Stewart, he was with Emmanuel Stewart. There's a trust. There's a familiarity. You could have a tough round. You go back to the corner. It's a familiar face. It's a face you trust. You understand that the guy in the corner has your back. You're getting a second opinion that you're familiar with and value. Right? Here, I understand that Chad Dawson is going back to Eddie Mustafa Muhammad, who was a prior trainer. In fact, that he was the trainer in Dawson's Corner the first fight against Jean Pascal. I understand there's a familiarity, but this is like going back to your ex-wife, right? The reason she's your ex is because something wasn't right, right? So all I'm saying is, Given that Chad Dawson, in my opinion, gave away the first fight with one of the more lethargic starts we've seen, and given that Eddie Mustafa Muhammad was then replaced after that fight, keep in mind, John Scully was in Dawson's corner for the Hopkins rematch, not Eddie Mustafa Muhammad. That tells me that there's some friction between these two that's not comforting against a tough opponent like Jean Pascal. I'm on the sidelines for Pascal versus Dawson. I think Dawson on his best day beats Pascal on his best day. I'm just not sure how close to his best day Dawson is going to be for this fight. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. I hope that touches the bases on some recent fights. I really appreciate your support, especially on mornings like this after guys named LeBron James do what they do <laughs> in games where I was hoping for a different outcome. Next time, I'm going to have to really figure out just how intent on revenge for basketball fans. A team like the Miami Heat, thin on bench, playing several games in a short period of time on the road. Uh, I just need to figure out how intent on revenge that team is and just how driven LeBron James is, I'm definitely going to look at career milestones for LeBron James <laughs> before games. Anyway, let me hear from you. As I said, life's a learning experience. Let me hear from you. Thanks for following me. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com and on Roku private channel, Dwyer Boxing. Thanks for watching.